Good evening, all. Welcome to this special meeting of the Planning Commission, January 17th. Um, we uh, have one item here tonight, but we will plow through our agenda. So the first item on our agenda is public comment. This is open public comment for items that are not on tonight's agenda, but items that are within this commission's jurisdiction. And you may request that the matter be agendized for a future meeting. Uh, we cannot take any action on any matters you bring up tonight. You could do it in the future if it's agendized. Is there anyone who'd like to address the commission? Veronica Kelly Alves, Deadless City. I would just like to re reiterate what I said last week that since you are combining two very important issues, that the time be extended to a six minute public comment because they each deserve their three minutes. Thank you. Hi, uh, Andrew Franklin from Jensen City. And I would like to comment on the TAA lawsuit that was filed against the county its employees, and the cannabis license holders in the county listed as John Doe's. I realize we're a small community and boards and commission like these that are basically volunteer um, positions are populated by the same folks. Because there's not a lot of folks that have the gumption to sit up there and to do public service. And the same folks populate the Little League and the Lions Club. and. Like if you look at TAA and TPUD, they share the same legal counsel and they share... Excuse me, Mr. Franklin. Yes. The TAA lawsuit is really not the jurisdiction of the Planning Commission. The planning well, I'm, I'm going to get to um, your possible... Uh, can I finish? It's, you, it, it actually involves you, sir. If you stay at, within the jurisdiction of the commission. Okay. All right, thanks. So then I'll just get straight to the point. And then the one thing, basically the lawsuit has stirred the pot in the community quite a bit. Um, pun intended. And many people are asking about um, Commissioner McHugh yourself and your past or present involvement with this group, which would create a conflict of interest. And in hearing you speak from this side of the podium at many meetings in past years, myself I don't know. So my request is, could you, sir, could you please make a public statement or written, either written or verbal, at some point about your possible involvement with this group and why it is or isn't a conflict of interest. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, Liz McIntosh from Junction City. So I had no intentions of coming to this meeting tonight, um, though I knew it would be full of excitement. And um, I'm here for a separate issue. I'm very ill-prepared, so bear with me. The meat and potatoes of what I'm asking, I don't know if it's really in your purview or not. But there is a project nearby to the Junction City School off of Red Hill Road called the Smith Tailings Project. And they're currently in the process of trying to update their CUP and reclamation, or reclamation plan that goes back to 1997. And so what I'm hoping that the commission can do is to agendize um, a possible revocation of this permit. We're currently waiting for the CUP to come back to where we can actually see it here and weigh in on it officially. But five months or eight months ago, back in May, we received notification at our school. I sit on the school site council now for four years. I work full time at the Junction City School. And um, I brought these here. I don't know if I have enough, and I don't know who I should pass them to. But it is the, the initial statement and part of it, of the narrative, of what this project is seeking to do and initially it was a reclamation project where there's all these massive tailing piles and this and that and even though it was controversial back when it was first passed um, it did pass with the conditions that there would never be a rock crusher on it and other activities that would constitute a new CUP. I've read your ordinance about CUPs and from what I can tell the current project, its current activity as of today, is far outside of what is allowed in this reclamation. There is um, supposed emergency plans in place right now where um, during the, I think it was the, the French Gulch slide, not French Gulch, the big slide that we had last year, all of that material came there. So here's a project supposed to be taking everything down, 
and now there's mountains of material, and now they want to put in a cement plant. And they've had a rock crusher on there. We had a public meeting when this came out at the North Fork, um, North Fork Range, and the operator showed up and said, nothing to see here, folks. We've been rock, or rock crushing here for 20 years. So I have been in communication with the planning department for all this time. I have it fully documented, and nobody has been able to give me any evidence that there is anything in place other than this reclamation plan which doesn't allow for any of this activity. This is right on the Trinity River. There are sensitive receptors all around. It is partially zoned RR two and a half, and it is completely surrounded by neighborhoods. It is a total nuisance. When that slide was happening, we all bared with it because we understood the big picture. They were operating 24 hours a day. I'm 3,000 feet from this particular project, but I'm on the river corridor. I could hear it all night long. I could see the floodlights come right up into my property, and I am not alone in that. To have a meeting set up with only 24, 48 hours notice, we had over 40 people show up. People are very angry. We don't want our kids subjected to this, and I don't know why it's taken so long. I know that SHN is handling this, and I might add that that's being paid for out of cannabis funds. That bothers me, but that aside, I'm just at my wit's end. These are my kids. I work here full time. And I just, I feel like there's a lot of double standards in this county, and I feel like this is a, a blatant illustration. And those trucks are now operating all over again. I pulled in there today and asked if they had a permit. Nope. You know, this would never be allowed for a cannabis um, project. So if we can get that agendized, if that's any kind of possibility, I'm begging you, please. Bring this to the, to the commission and let us weigh in. We did that. We've given public comment. Our board fully supports this to not happen. Our school site council said no. People wrote letters from all over. Please respect our community and bring this forward. Thank you. Thank you. Chair, go ahead. <coughs> um, I became aware of the work going on out of this location uh, late this afternoon. Um, my uh, first impression of it is, is that it probably has to do with uh, Caltrans and the cleanup that they're doing at Babor Road. As a matter of fact, this afternoon I got a text saying that they're going to start a lot of work out there. Uh, I did request last time that when the big front slide was over that Caltrans would call and coordinate with us, and I did not receive a call, so we are going to be long enough to verify that it was not that, and if it was not that, then we'll find out what it is actually going on and how this uh, all plays into each other. So I just want to let Ms. McIntosh, Mrs. McIntosh know that, that we have received the message and we are going to be looking into it. Can we report back to us here? Yeah, we'll report back to you next week. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing none. We'll move on the agenda. I have three minutes. If there are no minutes or all business, we'll move on to new business, which is item number four, a proposed mitigated negative declaration, a result and a use permit for cannabis distribution facility. This is a public hearing. Uh, it is a proposed mitigated negative declaration in the, in the secret document. It's a rezone from highway commercial to heavy commercial and a conditional use permit for cannabis for a cannabis distribution facility. Located at 30661 State Highway 3 in Douglas City, APN 015490-08,09,10 and 11 applicant mines. <coughs> I would like to uh, let the public know that this is a complex item. There's actually three actions in this item that the commission will be looking at today. There's a a CEQA document, it's an initial study and a mitigated negative declaration, which will be reviewed by the uh, Commission. Then there is a rezone of four parcels, as it states, from uh, highway commercial to heavy commercial. And then there is a conditional use permit. So this is, if you, can, if you will, it's a tiered set of actions. Each action needs to move forward to have us consider the next action. So we'll take them in that sequence. The CEQA document, the rezone, and then the uh, conditional use permit. Um, for each one of those, we will have 
a public comment period, a three-minute public comment period for each one of those items. Uh, it will extend the evening a bit, but I think it gives us the most open opportunity for the public and the applicant to engage on this, and staff to engage on this item. So, uh, so that's how I think we'll handle it. Commissioners, any comments or questions? Then I think staff, it's your turn. Yeah, actually, yeah. I'm going to take it from the beginning. Uh, I just wanted to go through a little bit of history about uh, how we kind of go through use permits and using consultants because there seemed to be uh, some earlier confusion. I just wanted to touch on that real quick. You might recall a while back uh, we, we uh, when we or when the board first established this program, a lot of these projects were going to require use permits. And as you might recall, there was a concern about having a large number of use permits. Uh, we have a limited staff, and when you're in those type of situations, it is quite common that staff will go, county staff will go out and seek a consultant to help augment getting the work done uh, with a consultant staff. And so in this case, we went to uh, SHN uh, back about a little more than a year ago to uh, have get assistance to do on-call work, which uh, had to do with cannabis and planning activities. So it could have been anywhere from a difficult permit to a youth permit, but essentially what they do is they serve as extension of staff to allow us to uh, keep doing work while we're moving through things. Um, so we did have, uh, S we did initially assign this project to SHN and they were our consultant uh, through this project. They had the same responsibility staff would have had, which is to look at this project with an independent, unbiased approach and make the assessments that need to be made. Uh, actually, being that they're a consultant from out of the area, they're, they're probably even could be said a little bit more independent than staff would be. Um, so, as I mentioned, it's, they're there to do the use permit. They've been working through it. Uh, the candidate or the applicant has had some discussion with them about timelines and presenting information, but we do keep uh, the applicant's interaction with the consultant limited so that we can get, and again, uh, a report that's prepared based on the facts rather than based on opinions either left or right. Um, so they present a report, and one of the things that I want to mention is that uh, in the report, there's requirements that have to be met in order for it to be a mitigated and negative debt, which essentially is um, no required. Uh, there's environmental impacts that are mitigated back to not significant. And when we're in that situation, and it meets all county codes, it's staff's uh, duty to recommend that project and move it forward. And so uh, with that, um, unless the county council has anything else to say, uh, I want to introduce Mark Cheney, from, uh, who is the principal scientist with HSN, and he'll be presenting the project tonight as an extension of staff. And the project, are, are we focusing on CEQA as the first action? Focusing on CEQA? Right. Well, when we, a project meaning it's, for us it's a, it's a <coughs> set of actions that we are recommending to you that we take tonight. So I might use an interchange, but yes, it's CEQA. Okay, but we have broken this down into three actions for us, that our level of actions that we're supposed to take. Yes. Okay, so please go ahead. <coughs> Zone and cannabis distribution facilities you mentioned. Um, I'm going to look at, there's three items as you mentioned tonight, and I'm going to go through and present the project um, rather than breaking up 
the project an individual action item at this point in time, give you a sense of what's going on. Essentially, we've got three action items that were the council, the planning commission should uh, consider tonight. One is, as you mentioned, the recommendation to the board of supervisors for the approval of the mitigated negative declaration and adoption of the mitigation <coughs> monitoring reporting program, which is one action item for you. The second that you should review tonight would be a recommendation to the board of supervisors for approval for the requested rezone of the four parcels you mentioned from highly commercial to heavy commercial. And the third action item would be the recommendation to the Board of Supervisors to approve the cannabis conditional use permit for a distribution facility on one of the parcels of the four that are proposed for reason. So those are essentially what we're looking at tonight in terms of the, the action items that are being considered. Um, the proposed project itself, again, has the two main components. One is a request for rezone of four parcels. And the second part is the application uh, review and approval of the cannabis use permit. The um, project was revised, originally came in to the county as an application for, from the applicant for a rezone to industrial on those parcels, and then was uh, revised and resubmitted with an application to a C3 heavy commercial zoning. Um, as you noted, the uh, cannabis use permit cannot be approved until the rezoning of the affected parcels is approved. So it is a step-by-step -step process that we look at here. You can approve, you can recommend <coughs> approval of the CEQA document and not recommend approval of other items, but it's kind of a moot point at that level. So it's a, a discussion you can have tonight. I um, wanted to go through kind of the project location, make sure everybody's on the same plane field with that. As you're well aware, it's in the uh, uh, Marshall Ranch Road and Highway 3 area <coughs> of the city. Um, essentially, there's four parcels we mentioned, uh, APN 15, 498, 9, 10, and 11, that are clustered in amongst themselves. So it's about 5.57 acres is the total area of impact on those parcels. Uh, the one parcel, uh, parcel number 10, is uh, requested for a cannabis uh, use permit. And we'll go through kind of the site plan in a few minutes in terms of what those those have there. Uh, currently, the the uh, other than the existing facility, existing building that's on the one parcel where the proposed uh, cannabis facility is being recommended for or being proposed for, we've got uh, a residential uh, facility on the back end of the property, one parcel, and then the other parcels are currently vacant. Uh, all the parcels have had some type of development use over time. Uh, whether they've been used as a single entity or not, uh, but they are four separate parcels on the site out there. Uh, surrounding land uses, um, we have kind of auto yard dismantling location just north of the property site that abuts it. There's a mini storage uh, immediately to the south of the project site. We've got some heavy equipment logging type facilities uh, below that, and then a propane, the tank farm, the Marigas or uh, farm down there below it. And then we've got residential uh, uses that are adjacent to that, and there's some distances there you can see how far they're away from the edge of the property, the approximate property boundary, not from the edge of the proposed activity. But since we're looking at the whole rezoning, this is how their, their distances were laid out. Uh, existing zoning, and I'll touch upon this, um, you know, a little bit. Um, a little bit later in terms of uh, the process, but existing zoning right now, we do have uh, um, very various zoning that has been uh, developed and changed over the years since the original zoning was set up. Right now to the west, uh, there was an RR 2.5, which is residential. Uh, that was rezoned in the past for a mag forest to a uh, highly commercial and then down to a, uh, a rural residential in 1996. And then south of the project property, uh, where the Amerigas is right now, is a C3 that was rezoned from highway commercial to heavy commercial in 1989. Um, there was questions regarding um, the uh, zone mapping that was available on the county website. We used the same information that the public has access to. And so originally we went through, we looked at that. There was an incorrect designation on the county website in terms of the uh, highway commercial uh, designation had not been changed since the rezone. And uh, we have we reflected that change here in the modification. We also had some uh, additional changes. There was also a uh, uh, remainder of a, 
couple of those small parcels that are shown as highly commercial that were also uh, supposed to be rural residential. So this map reflects that, that current change. Um, I'll talk a little briefly about the project components because that does fit into the CEQA document. The project components for the use permit, uh, there's a approximately a retrofit of about a 7,500 square foot existing facility out there. Um, we're going to have 8 to 10 full-time employees, about 8 to 10 seasonal employees. Uh, there's an existing well and septic system that's on the site. Uh, they're proposing to install security fencing around a portion of the site uh, where the distribution facility is. Have on-site security, parking, and then access to the site is from Highway 3. Uh, the site plan that's been proposed for the project is this was taken from some of the various elements that were uh, supplied to us by the applicant. Uh, looking at in the white line is, a, is the approximate parcel boundary there where the, uh, the site is located. We've got uh, security fencing, uh, there's some refrigerated storage inside of the facility itself, uh, vehicle gates for access, uh, existing fuel tanks out there. There's also other, other on-site features, water tanks and so forth and so on that are on the property. Um, and those will be used and, and upgraded as needed to comply with use permit requirements. Um, the CEQA initial study uh, went through a typical process. Uh, the county undertook their AB 52 consultation for potentially affected tribes. Uh, that went through the process. There was an evaluation of the project against the threshold of significance that the state has identified uh, as part of the CEQA process. Uh, mitigation measures were developed that uh, looked for unanticipated cultural resource issues so we found were potentially could be significant if they weren't mitigated. And then uh, we also identified in the CEQA documents some potential conditions of approval. They're not mitigation measures, they're not single event mitigation measures, but they're long-term conditions that we would recommend as part of the conditions of approval for the use permit be, be focused on in there. Those were at least identified in areas that uh, we had other items. The CEQA document also looked at existing permit requirements, whether it be the cannabis ordinance, whether it be the state ordinances for uh, requirements for cannabis transportation. Also looked at other uh, facility permits in terms of water, septic, transportation, and so on. Um, the CEQA document was put out for public agency comment in November. Uh, that process closed the first part of December. Uh, during that three-day period, we got uh, two comments from the public and two comment letters from the uh, agencies. Uh, those comments and responses are in your uh, packet tonight that you have for the uh, CEQA process. And then there was responses to uh, comments. Uh, we got comments received and are included in the staff report. And then from those, what we looked at was agency comments were essentially limited to tribal resources. Uh, we have the Native American Heritage Commission uh, requested that the county implement a, a series of mitigation measures for tribal cultural resources. However, there was no significant impact. That we had no responses from any tribal entities or culturally affected individuals during the comment period that would raise any significant issues. So therefore, there's no mitigation warranted. Uh, the cultural resources report was prepared for the project site also reached out again and there's no cultural resources or tribal issues identified at that point. So the typical uh, comments that were added were unanticipated fines for cultural resource mitigation measures, and we did not include any additional ones from the um, state comments. Additional questions that came up, there's a range of additional questions that are kind of uh, breaking down into some kind of thematic areas that, that were raised in the questions about county zoning information, which we shared. There uh, was some incorrect information that we revised and, and tried to provide uh, comments to that. Uh, questions about fire suppression and fire danger in the area. We know that there's a significant amount of uh, very high fire hazard areas in, in the county and this part of the state. I looked at those comments. <coughs> there's questions about and concerns about on-site water and on-site wastewater uh, uses. Uh, concerns about uh, downcast and shield the lighting requirements that are part of the standard state and county processes for uh, protection of light quality. And, uh, you know, looking at those are really, of the comments, our opinion is there's really no new environmental concerns raised. There was questions about the process or how they were done, but nothing new was added. So we, we responded to those comments 
in the face of the secret document itself. Um, <coughs> carrying on from that, just real briefly wrapping up for what we have tonight. Um, since the uh, comments received prior to the planning commission hearing, additional comments came in this week. Uh, we received comments from the county in terms of the uh, topics for tonight. Um, they're included, I think, in your information packet as well. Um, generally, topic areas related to CEQA were many of the same comments we've looked at. State cannabis transportation. Uh, there were some questions about off-site soil contamination, which isn't necessarily purview of this project because it is off-site. Uh, fire hazard suppression, availability of water, wastewater. Again, the zoning questions came up. Uh, questions about security, uh, security in the area as well as security at the site. Uh, traffic impacts and then access through Marshall Ranch Road. <coughs> Additionally, we had uh, uh, the topics that we saw from the letters came this week from the public comment for your hearing tonight. Um, you have a chance to take a look at those. Uh, they're for your review and determination. They're not subject, they're not a CEQA issue. These are land use issues that we have no purview as a CEQA uh, practitioner, so to speak, or as extension of staff. Um, those are, are not something that we can hold, find a, a fact related to an environmental impact for something, um, especially in things like not, you know, not compatible with adjacent residential uses, uh, zoning, not vision for the double city plan. Uh, there's been questions about the negative impact on the economy in the area and land uses. Um, didn't feel it was an appropriate use in the Douglas City core area uh, adjacent to Highway 3. Uh, comments about the lax municipal services for the area and uh, felt there was uh, going to be impacts to the Trinity River from future impacts of this project and what may come down the road. And uh, it's really just incompatible with the project area. Those aren't things that we can identify in the CEQA process. We have no way to measure that. It's more of a, a land use planning comment that, that your body would, would be looking at. Um, and with that, that's kind of the end of what I have. Um, do we want to, answer questions you might have and, and see what we can do from there. Commissioners, any questions? Mark? Coach, are we, um, with the, the light, Yes. the um, residences are down the Correct. slope. Did you look at or address the height of light standards, because obviously the taller the light standard, sure. the more impact it would have on those downslope residences. Well, currently, the, as proposed, there are no light standards proposed for the project. Okay. Uh, light would be to fix the faces of the buildings. There may be some lower perimeter lights on the fencing. Um, we don't have a uh, any indication that there's going to be any light standards that we would talk about. Uh, the typical uh, light shielding that it, it, it does spread the light down, obviously, but it doesn't spread the light out. The intent of the light shielding for the dark, <coughs> dark sky and other um, uh, state and federal regulations try to minimize that as much as possible so we're not getting up light. Uh, yeah, we do recognize that the um, properties, as we note upon here, the properties are um, to the, this one, are going to be um, to the, uh, behind and down below the, the properties, there is a slope there. Um, for the, the cannabis, the current cannabis distribution facility, uh, that project is closer to Highway 3 than it is to Marshall Ranch Road. Um, and, and it's a, it's frankly a uh, lighting standard, and then it has to go through the enforcement process in terms of is there is there a problem? Um, but at this point in time, we don't have any lighting, lighting standards or poles that we've, we've indicated to us, there hasn't been any indication. Okay. I also had a question about uh, traffic, both, both pedestrian and uh, vehicular. Okay. And um, you indicate that access is from Highway 3, but you don't make, um, you don't make that a condition that access only both vehicular and pedestrian um, access be only from Highway 3 and not from Marshall Ranch Road. Is there a reason why that was not made a condition? Well, we're not trying to condition the project for 
some of the items that are kind of outside our purview. When we looked at traffic and transportation, the proposed access is coming off of Highway 3. Okay, and, and since so, that is... So since that is, that's kind of what we looked at and said, what's the impact from there? There is no... Um, there is no... Uh, no ability for us really... We, we could make all sorts of recommendations for conditions of approval that may not be pertinent. Right. And so that's really kind of one of those things where as the planning commission, if you decided that, you know, this project should have, in your opinion, uh, additional conditions on there, that, that would be all within your purview. Okay, and then, then my last question, is, sorry, is, is about uh, the generator being used in an emergency, in emergency yeah. situations. Um, I did not see anything about generator noise and possibly shielding or insulating against sure. um, ambient noise from that. The only the only indication that, that we have is that you know because it does have uh, power from Trinity uh, Power, uh, that's the primary source. Uh, temporary emergency type uses that may or may not be used are pretty difficult to analyze. You are correct that we do have a, I believe a, a note in there that. Um, any temporary, any generator sources has to comply with the state requirements for those uh, generation sources in terms of uh, noise and uh, air quality. So whether that is a uh, separate shielding, whether that's in a building, you know, it, it really depends on how, what type of generator comes in. And we, since it's a, a temporary minor, not a permanent part of it. If it was a permanent part of the project, it was proposed that the, and we have projects throughout this and other counties that are run on generators. If it is that, then we have to look at that in terms of the stationary source, go through the air quality calculation for that, make sure it meets that, and it has the noise the condition on that as well. Thank you. Uh, one question. You show the three residences that are uh, adjacent to the proposed project. There are other undeveloped parcels in there. None of the maps actually show the parcels in that RR 2.5. Yeah, I think the... Is it four, five, six? Let me see here if I can find them. Yeah. <clears throat> it shows it here. I know oh, it's I can see some I can bay a little bit. I apologize <laughs> for the faint lines on there. It looks a lot cleaner when you're up close. But I think that there are... It looks like, according to the map, there's one, two, three, four... Six at least, and maybe more than maybe seven in their parcels. There's three that are developed right now. Um, uh, there's some type of development on residential development, other associated development with the residences, and there are other parcels that are uh, vacant uh, or undeveloped at this point. Any questions for Mark? Okay. Mark? Yep. Yeah. That was the presentation for the super document. That's the standard part. Okay. It's just, uh, I just wanted to comment real quick. Uh, we did talk about condition approval, and there is a condition, condition two, in there that requires downcast lighting and lighting that does, uh, doesn't go off the property. I mean, you can't keep 100% of it off. The lighting technologies with the proper screening can greatly reduce uh, ambient lighting off the property. And we do ask for it to your course. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next thing would be public comment, but before that, uh, this would be an opportunity if the applicant or his agent would like to comment on the, the CEQA. The subject we're going to have, that we're having right now, henceforth in this section of the meeting, is the, the CEQA document, the uh, initial study and the and you get to make the declaration that the commission has before it. And uh, these pub, uh, you should, you go ahead, Archie. No, go ahead. Uh, my comment was, again, I was getting ahead of myself there. Okay. Terry Mines, Junction City. Um, looks like a very good secret document. It looks like, um, like from previous and on this area, has been a, started like gold mine way back when it's been used many times over for manufacturing, industrial, and everything else. I think uh, from what we can see, it's uh, 
had a very thorough CEQA and had some questions asked that are very um, good questions. Uh, the reason we went off Highway 3 is because that's the way we're going to go. It's not to come off Marshall Ranch Road. It's a business not going through the residential neighborhood. That's why it was all set up that way. And as far as lighting goes, going back towards Marshall Ranch Road, that will be more motion detector lighting. The more serious lighting is going to be out in the front towards um, Highway 3 where the actual business comes and operates to and from. And, uh, and that's where it is. But from behind, you're going to have more motion detector. If something moves, then light would turn on. So I would hope it stays pretty quiet um, back there because of fencing and that nothing's moving and wouldn't really have that kind of effect. Um, so I don't really know much more than that. Otherwise, it looked like a very solid sequel. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. All right, at this point, we will open for public comment. Please have your comments focus on the CEQA document, the uh, uh, initial study of mitigated negative that was uh, largely presented here, but the document is what we're here to talk about. Um, I would ask you to keep your comments to three minutes at this time. Ruth, do we have it? We'll be timing. You all will be timing right here. Thank you. And. Uh, um, I would ask the audience to no clapping if you really like what you're hearing and no hissing if you don't. Please uh, um, just show respect to the, to the speakers. So. <laughs> and if you care to, you could uh, tell us your name when you step to the podium. It helps us with the record. So. My name is Veronica Kelly Alves, and I live on Marshall Ranch Road, Douglas City, California. I have to skip ahead here because I have separate notes. I wasn't sure how this was going to pan out. But I would like to point out there are six developed properties, not three. And one who was going to build, and hopefully will still do so, that is here this evening. Um, and my numbers are a little different on uh, APN 8 or 9 as part of the parcel viewer. Um, let's talk EIS as presented. In addition to the many glaring issues that have been pointed out in written comments, once you get past the many directional errors and the timber lodge, is no longer in the C2 cluster as it burned down about 25 years ago. The Douglas City Community Plan on page 17 states, due to varied soil characteristics throughout the plan area, each potential home site, which would include individual, must be evaluated on an individual basis for its ability to accommodate on-site septic systems. Page 18 states, regardless of the general soil characteristics of a, give, of a given area, the site-specific soils information will continue to be necessary for all properties in the plan area. Where are those indivi individual parcel reports? Where are any reports of physical testing being completed? It appears general information from website data was plugged in for these areas of concern. Um, there's no mention of the bus stop across from the warehouse. Uh, page 15 under air quality, it says the nearest sensitive receptor to the project site are residential developments, 0.25 miles, and the Hayfork Elementary School, 0.7 miles distant. That's on page 15 of the CEQA. Yeah, yes. Under noise on page 34, it says the nearest residential de developments are 520 feet southwest and the Douglas City Elementary School located 0.6 miles west. It's north. And I'm directionally challenged. <laughs> on page 5, under local setting, it states the proposed rezone properties are located outside the floodplain of the Trinity River, roughly 500 feet from the edge of the river. Are we using core math for this? And I just don't understand. Um, when there is physical or environmental ties to a project, California case law allows for social and economic impact to be included in CEQA studies. This should be a consideration in this evaluation. And those are some of my comments on the CEQA statement, all the errors. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Michael Snyder. I'm uh, relatively new here. I, I'd like to address uh, some of Diana's uh, concerns. I've spent uh, 17 years of my life as a motion picture studio grip. That means I made shadows over lights for a living in major motion pictures. Your concerns with light can primarily be handled with a few well-placed pieces of sheet metal. And that will keep the light right at the property line and not be an issue with it going on into the residences. And I'm aware of this because I hate other people's lights on my property. Trust me, girlfriend. I'm with you on that. Okay? Uh, I'm also now an electrical contractor. And I can tell you that Generac makes automatic um, generator systems that would be ideal for this project. 
that are actually quieter than a car. They run on propane, they're automatic, they start themselves up every month, they check their own oil, it's a really cool deal. And I would suggest, respectfully suggest that both of your concerns with regards to both light and noise from generators, the technology is in place, it's easily applied, and basically a non separator. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Good evening. Dave Alves, Douglas City, 280 Marshall Ranch Road. Um, my beautiful wife forgot to mention there are uh, there also seems to be no cumulative assessments for this rezone and project portal as it is required by the CEQA document. Um, I have here the roof and copies of learning discrepancy in the CEQA. I found throughout my small amount of time that there were glaring discrepancies within the CEQA. It looked like a, um, someone had uh, hurriedly put it together, um, had not been on site to do so, had used nothing but, uh, I won't say nothing, but mostly websites, etc., to do an assessment. Like my wife mentioned, there's been no soil samples taken, although both CEQAs state that it needs to be done. Um, in addition, there are, uh, are six. The, the gentleman hasn't been out to our place. If he's saying there are three residents, when he's asked directly by the commission, it's obvious he has no clue what really is out there. We are not 500 feet from the uh, project site. The river is 500 feet from the project site. We are one foot from the project site. Um, and that is the boundary lines, of course. Um, there, there are so many glaring. Before I got to page seven, I found over 20 errors. Um, Ruth should have those handed out to you now, so I really don't want to spend my time um, pointing out what you can read, um, but as you go through those, I would appreciate questions. Um, the direction is one thing. You, you're, you know it's a cut and paste from the Hoffman Project. I'm not saying no, that is the wrong statement to say, but it sure looks that way when you're using Hayfork schools and the distances and the dot two five from any housing area. Dot two five means a quarter of a mile before the nearest receptor. So when he's d discussing light issues, etc., we're a quarter of a mile away. That's not a quarter of a mile away. Um, the wells on, on this specific project, I would like to ask: Was it done for four potential C three heavy commercial businesses or one? And if it was done for one, was it done specifically for this permitted aspect? Because when he just got through stating that the well and the septic were on the parcel site, he's wrong again. The well is not on the parcel site. It's two parcels over. It's not even on the resident site. That's because they couldn't find water anywhere else. There is no other water there. Um, the new water report states that there are 10 gallons per minute. I get that. Somebody must have cleaned out the well because I know Leisure tried to do it several times, Mr. Shelton. Um, he came to me for water. I piped the pipe up to him at, at my own expense, uh, or my father did, I should say, uh, just so he could have enough water to survive. So I don't know how you go from a, a report, but it, it happened. It, it's, there's a miracle happened. And, and, but one thing I do want to point out, that that report was one October when the heavy rains had already occurred and the water was being refreshed. During the summer months, it's not capable. But what I really want to point out, and I digress, is that there's no way that well can support four <coughs> individual C3 parcels. Thank you, Mr. Jones. It's time. It's time already. Wow. Okay. I had intended at the very beginning to inform the public that I did meet with the Albiezes at their request. Um, and we had an extensive discussion where they were able to share their concerns, and I wanted to make sure that the commission knew that we had that. And uh, I, I had a similar meeting with the Albies. <laughs> and I did as well. <laughs> Hi, my name is Gail Goodyear. I'm a property owner on Marshall Ranch Road, Highway 3. Um, <clears throat> the initial study and proposed 
mitigated negative declarations incomplete, not certifiable. I ran into making a list of all of the errors, like the Albies. I skipped on to asking that the um, document have a appendix for each claim of significance, an appendix for each proposed mitigation, an appendix for the description of the property, just so a person could try to tell how the um, contractor put together their suppositions, conclusions, recommendations, and proposals for mitigation. A reader can see in the document by number or letter the appendix as presented. As the document was presented, a reader is guessing all of the time how conclusions were made. <clears throat> in October 2017, I sent a memo that stated that the property zoned rural residential was on the south boundary. It is a vacant parcel. That fact is, is not stated correctly in the initial study and um, proposed mitigated negative declaration, um, despite the fact the adjustments have been made in the presentation today. This submission hides the Marshall Ranch Ribbon Creek neighborhood as important. Um, APN uh, that ends in 11 has no right of way to Highway 3. No right away. That's not in this study. The testimony of Cliff Cross and Dorothy Goodyear regarding lack of water for the four parcels needs inclusion in the initial study and the proposed negative declaration as the no water times of year trump all other water data and certificates. Those purchasing um, Marshall Ranch and Redding Creek's lots receive a notice of potential hazards in the soil and water from the former mill Although um, soil studies may show that that is no longer relevant, the idea that liquids and vapors transport is important to the neighboring wells and properties. I believe this transport could trigger a full CEQA. There has um, not been like um, distribution on the property. The pallet business failed. It was a permit without substance. A logging truck storage yard is not manufacturing on or distributing from the site. So um, <clears throat> since the closure of the sawmills, the Planning Commission has not approved like activity in the River Canyon. Worry about what will leach into the ground, water, wells, and river has trumped all business proposals tied to products. A new Trinity River Canyon worry is the fast spread of wildfire particularly in the afternoon. Um, many people have been asking for fire hydrants and for connection to the Weaverville Community Services District water. <clears throat> Ms. Goodyear, that's three minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you for <coughs> Veronica Dudin and I live on Marshall Ranch Road and I just wanted to uh, say a couple comments. First of all, there's a lot of wildlife out there and so I'm thinking of the motion detectors. They're going to be going off all the time. The fox, the quail, the bears, the deer, they're all coming up and down that hill all the time. I can't drive down Marshall Ranch Road without almost hitting an animal pretty much every day. Also, the R Marshall Rance Road is already being used by those people. They, I don't know where they got the idea, but they actually come down the back side of the house often. There'll be just random people walking up and walking up the hill to the house, and I don't know these people. I mean, it's just that they're, it's not a walkway, it's the, it's the downhill, right? Everybody's talking about the hill that goes down the side. There's no trail there. So even people would be walking through those motion detectors and those, and those lights. So there's already a lot of traffic happening, that, and then nothing's happened yet. And so it's a little bit worrisome. And also the fact that this other teacher was saying that things have been approved in another area. And I'm afraid that that's what's going to happen here, is there's going to get some permit, but somebody's going to just go ahead and do whatever they want. And it's going to be hard to backtrack. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, I'm Jed Medine, and I too met with the Albies. Just 
wanted to get that out in the open. And uh, uh, I am a resident of Marshall Ranch Road in Douglas City. My fiance, Miranda Coakley, and I appreciate the opportunity to comment on the Mines Douglas City Rezone and Cannabis Distribution Facility Project. We purchased our first home on Marshall Ranch Road in mid-December 2018, and we were not fully aware of the controversial rezoning proposal until we rece received the notice of public hearing in the mail late last week. In our research over the last week, we did notice several items that brought us some concern, and we, could, we would like to highlight the two items we feel are most important to us in the rezoning consideration. The community has repeatedly expressed worry over the ability of the subject parcels to handle the wastewater of the potential 10 full-time employees and additional 10 seasonal employees at the proposed distribution center. The initial study states that the properties to the east have, have, have had poor sewage capacity. It, also, it is also noticed, noted that the rezoning findings of the Amerigas parcel to the south show that the land is not suitable for most uses allowed under the existing highway commercial zoning due to poor soils for sewage disposal systems. The initial study concluded that it was unclear whether the same issues are present on the subject parcels. The county's response to the community was that the proposed use is compatible with the existing septic system, a declaration made <coughs> that was made without any verifying documentation. After persistent requests from the community asking for documents in documents supporting the county's approval of the septic, the planning department at last released documents on Monday of this week. Two documents were provided from J&J Septic, one for the construction of the resident, residential septic in 1979 and the other for, for an additional septic in the warehouse in 1987. These reports are simple septic installation forms. The only commentary provided is from the 1987 report and states that the system is approved for one toilet and one hand sink only. Other usage must be approved in writing and shall require further soil excavations and expansion of the field. Mr. Bedini, your time's up. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Seeing none, we'll close the public comment on the uh, document. Commissioners, comments, questions, thoughts? I would, uh, I would like to know if staff would be prepared to, uh, to give us more information on the existing septic. Uh, it does seem a little... If, if you have a residential septic that's existing on the parcel, how would that be compatible with up to 20 employees plus incoming business? That's a, a major difference from a, a two-bedroom or three-bedroom home. Yeah, I'll In terms of looking at the um, documentation provided to us in terms of the uh, septic system, the notification on there, we received no additional comments from environmental health in terms of uh, additional work. They were notified that we're looking at the site for the cannabis distribution facility in terms of the CUP for that one, for the existing septic. Uh, according to the um, public health, uh, county environmental health at this point in time, they had no comments about expanding it at this point. They would want to see, they would want to have the applicant come in at time of development to say, I need to have additional septic or if there's a failed system. So there's no the standard requirements when we notice the uh, environmental health department, they didn't provide any additional comments. They're dealing with it. And so from that standpoint, we had no additional information other than the septic information we had. Uh, the applicant wasn't required to go through uh, for the sequence document and develop a septic system report or additional soils analysis. That's something that usually comes along with the building department. And he does take a risk that you can't get septic on your property uh, or you can't get approved for a larger system that you can't build your project or implement your project because you can't meet county standards. And that is a risk that the owner has to accept on their own themselves. Thank you. Yeah. I, um, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Um, thank you. I do have additional comments in, in light of uh, Mr. Fraser's comments. Um, again, uh, uh, in regards to the bathroom, I believe OSHA requires, uh, if you have a minimum of 15 employees, that you need to have two restrooms. 
So it's clear that the one half bathroom and sink that serves the current uh, sewage disposal system <coughs> seems to be inadequate. If, in fact, the business proposal is proposing uh, in between 16 and 10 employees. Um, so in light of that, and before we move forward, I believe an engineering study to test the capacity of wastewater discharge at that location should be conducted. Uh, I don't know if this should be something we require before we move forward and continue to address the rezoning and conditional use permit, or it's uh, something that can be added as a conditional condition when we address the CUP, but I, I did want to bring that to light. I, we have heard testimony um, from multiple areas and residents, and, and also it's clear and evident in the reports that we received that the percolation um, uh, is very poor in that, in that area, and uh, this is a, a weight, weighty concern uh, just that how, how is the sewage or the expansion of the sewage uh, may be obtained and even feasible. So that is my comment in regards to that. Thank you, questions. I do have a question about the traffic study. Is that in the staff report or is that in the ISMND? The traffic, traffic memo that was prepared is yeah. part of the uh, initial study. Okay, so it used the standard book, I think it referenced manufacturing as the type of facility that was used to come up with the 43. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, this isn't a manufacturing facility. This is specifically a facility targeted at distribution, which under the license includes transport. So. In other words, the distribution facility has traffic coming and going, has, has traffic going to testing labs, uh, let alone daily commute by up to 20 people. So are you confident the 43 is representative of what a distribution facility is as opposed to a manufacturing facility? Well, because you're only seven away from triggering a study. <coughs> from, from 50. Yeah, but 50 is for p and peak. Um, 40 is, is, if I recall, the, the daytime expected trips that we have coming in and going out. So, based on the manufacturing trips, yes, represents. But even, even then, um, first of all, uh, it also just rests along the Caltrans Highway 3 corridor. So, usually, any type of improvements on Highway 3 would be. Uh, <coughs> generated by Caltrans for any type of additional improvements and I'm, what we're looking for is is there anything that would probably trigger uh, some type of improvement and one of the things I want to point out is, is um, the, the level that we have here is very very close to approaching insignificant uh, even even at that I mean I would point out for instance Tom Bell Road does not have a turn in it that goes to the county dump and has volumes that are well in excess of this, although we are someday putting up a, a left turn, but there isn't one there now. Um, East Weaver Creek, I'm trying to pick examples of roads that do not have left turn, but still function uh, as they are. So what I looked at when I was looking at this, it has a very, very low volume. It does not generate anything that is additional or unusual. Uh, to all the other types of businesses that are along there, and that's kind of what we're looking at. And so, therefore, there was really nothing that would trigger any type of improvement or recommendation for improvement that Thank you. Uh, one other, one, one of the comments was about cumulative impact. One of the comments had to do with cumulative impact, and, and that strikes me as relevant in the sense of what is the cumulative impact of deleting four more highway commercial parcels, taking out, you know, the community plan emphasizes highway commercial. In a vacuum, we could look at these four as four parcels, but it's actually four fewer parcels in the entire county, the entire area of that eastern county, Douglas City. 
did you think at all about when you're doing this, sort of what's the impact of four more highly commercials going away? Um, the answer is yes and no. Uh, the answer is yes, we looked at uh, this reduce, would reduce uh, highly commercial properties in the county. Um, we did not look at, and no, we did not look at this as a CEQA issue because reducing the lines on the map, essentially, changing the colors on the, the zoning map, doesn't have any environmental, direct environmental trigger. The, the analysis, the appropriate analysis under uh, your scenario is a general plan and planning commission issue in terms of does that make sense? Do we want to have that type of an impact from a non sequa issue in terms of our neighborhood community compatibility land use designations planning? But it doesn't have a direct sequa impact. I can't draw a analysis that says if I change the color from one to another, there's an automatically direct sequa impact in that piece. There may be some indirect things. But in terms of the context, how does that change countywide? No, we can't look at that in terms of the sequence study. Fair enough. Okay, we'll come back to that point then. Sure, we get it. Commissioners? On, uh, on page 19 under cultural resources, uh, under the findings okay. for that, on that on section. Which document are you? Yeah. I mean, I think it's just an error, but I'm sure. bringing it up. No the findings for this section say additional project and environmental data, further discussion and analysis of environmental impacts, recommendations for mitigations for potential impacts, and a mitigation monitoring plan will be included in the EIR prepared for this proposed project. EIR. Unfortunately, it, for those of us working in CEQA EIR and initial study mitigated negative declaration are oftentimes interchanged. Um, and so we're, the intent is not that this is an EIR. Clearly. And even in the CEQA guidelines, the state has printed and mandated in their uh, guidelines and direction, they specifically state that EIR and mitigated negative declaration relates to CEQA, but not necessarily the specific action. Uh, it's clear that this document is a mitigated negative declaration. It's gone through the process of noticing per that. There's no intent to be a, an EIR in terms of the procedural process. And it doesn't need the intent to form of an EIR. So, um, that oversight. Okay, yeah, because every other yeah, section of the findings talk about what the impacts are and if there weren't any or, or what they were mitigated. This one was pretty different. Yeah, well, so we're clearly right now we're working on three other EIRs. And so there, there is sometimes Metal blocker. Yeah, sorry. Other questions or comments or thoughts? Commission? Mr. Chair, I do have a couple of comments. Um, uh, I should have piggybacked this one off of the last comment of the septic and its relation to uh, section 18, which is page 42, uh, utilities and service uh, system. Uh, item D says, have sufficient water supplies available to serve most, so serve the project with serves and may or may serve the project from existing entitlements and resources. Uh, one thing that has been noted from, from many neighbors is the lack of water. Uh, I know that in the EIR, EIR uh, states that um, the well had produces 10 gallons per minute. Uh, actually, last night I called Lynn, uh, Laura Lynn, who owns uh, Douglas City Garage, and I had a lengthy conversation with her. She, well, she's been there for over 30 years. Uh, she's a personal friend of Lee Shelton, uh, which has, has passed, and owner owned the trucking company or the service truck. And she actually made mention, and I wanted to bring this up as well, that they have those uh, businesses there have experienced many water shortages over the year. Um, when Lee Shelton owned it, um, she said, and I quote, that on a seasonal basic water had to be trucked in just to cover basic business needs, let alone fire suppression. So also in addition to that, the testimony of many, many residents that their wells have run dry uh, seasonally and whatnot uh, exacerbates this concern. So I thought it would be prudent to bring up, uh, bring this up to the commission. Um, lastly, uh, another 
thing I wanted to bring up, another item was noise, which is section 12 of the EIR, page 34. Uh, n uh, number D says substantial, a substantial temporary periodic increase in ambient <coughs> noise level in the project vicinity above levels existing without the project. Um, this kind of got me thinking of hours of operation. I, I, I reviewed the uh, distribution ordinance, the cannabis distribution ordinance, and section 22.5, which is relates to heavy commercial on, the, on our zoning ordinance, and none of it specifies any limitation on hours of operation. So, again, just a suggestion to the commission, if, if the conditional use permit does get approved, I think it would be prudent to add some kind of uh, some kind of hours or, or limitation on hours of, of operation just in relation to the proximity of the residents. Uh, again, a suggestion for the commission to consider. Uh, that is it at the moment, Mr. Chairman. I believe there's some noise um, um, rules in the general plan. I mean, I think we would pull those up and look and see how they would really apply this year. I do believe those have some time of day. Limitations. Very well. Right. Thank you, Commissioner. <coughs> water, water, water. Any other observations, comments? Yeah, we've talked about water a lot. Water availability from a well and wastewater subject discharge capacity for this project or any of the other C3 projects that might be on these parcels. Um, the question is, does it rise? Do those issues raise, rise to the level of requiring further study in the Commission's opinion? I think that's one thing that has come up more than once up here. Thoughts on that? Uh, I I do think uh, I lean to the board the fact that it would require more study because we're not. It, it seems to me like we're looking too much at what the proposed project is rather than what the future could hold for four C three parcels right there in regards to water and sewage disposal capability. I mean, if you put four C3 projects on that ground and we already have people talking about lack of water and inability to for sewage disposal um, we could create a, a major problem down the road what when we're looking at this we're looking at uh, what would be the difference of use between uh, highway commercial and C3 and it's hard to detect the specific change in use. But uh, one thing that I do want to point out is anytime you have created lots, if you're creating a lot in itself in this action, this water would be something you would have to validate and ver verify and validate. In this particular situation, we are not creating lots, we are rezoning lots. So where the condition comes into play is at the time of the building of, of any types of structures or the final proposed use. See, we are rezoning from H3 to high, or from highway commercial to C3. Yeah, C3, sorry, I lost it there. Um, but we're not specifically saying what you're going to do. And so what you can do is you can say it must be able to percolate for the amount of employees you have. It must provide water as required for fire service and and um, use. Actually, most properties, what they're looking for is more the amount of water that they can produce for fire service than they are really for uh, drinking because that's when the water really comes out, is when you have a problem on the property and you need to hide the water. But anyways, um, it's common to put those conditions in there and while we're pulling the building permit, as, as uh, someone has said, it's, the developer has to come in with his proposed project and say, this is how many people are going to be there. He has to prove in the, in the building application that he can serve what he's proposing. 
But this is, um, so I accept that argument for the other three parcels. But on this particular parcel, we know what the use plan is, and this is the CEQA document that applies to well, that. And, and he did produce a well report <coughs> that, that showed that he could produce 10 gallons per minute. He did. And the well report is, <coughs> was uh, done by a licensed contractor and it is something that uh, we are to honor. But is that well on this parcel? No, it is not. So this <coughs> project only works if we treat all, far, par, all four parcels as the CUP parcel? Um, again, he has to prove water for the parcel that he is going to use. We are not creating parcels here, and that's the important thing. No, but we're doing a, an environmental analysis of a specific activity that's been applied for on a parcel. And point one, point two, it's not only the potable water, it's the septic water issue for up to 20 employees. And we know specific numbers about the, I mean, uh, we're lo leaping ahead to the CUP part of the conversation, yeah. Yeah. but this environmental study is specifically targeted at a use. I mean, we're, this isn't a, a random study about a random parcel. This is a, this is a study about a rezone and a CUP will consider in the future, but do we accept that the environmental study is in fact valid given we know what the parcel is going to be used for? Um, I, I would, I would normally say, or I'm not normally, this, in this situation, my usual advice is, is it's ha this is handled through a condition. Mm -hmm. um, and as you say, if you cannot meet that condition, you cannot build that building. And so I, from the information that was provided earlier, we believe that, that you can meet that service, but it is not or it is within the planning commission's preview to create a condition and place a condition on the project that he shall do this in order to get that building permit. Condition of approval of the permit? Yes. Okay, so that would come up again in the permit discussion. Yes. Okay. It is very intertwined, and it's interesting that we've been asked to recommend an environmental study for a purpose whereby it's not clear that it meets the environmental needs of the environment. It meets the needs of the environment. The perceptive. But well, it, we can have but a again, it was, those are handled through conditions <coughs> okay. that place restrictions that, that we make requirements that you meet certain things. It's, uh, um, so might a condition be that you got to put the well on the parcel that's getting the permit? Yes, you can, you can make that condition. Okay. So the environmental study would be telling us that in that area you can come up with a well that sometimes in the year produces 10 gallons a minute, but as a condition of approval of that permit, they've got to drop a new well on that site that produces adequate water as a condition of approval. For that parcel. For the building. For that parcel. Yeah. I mean, are there other options? Could the applicant form a mutual water company for yes, these, these four parcels? And and have a distribution system that would entitle each parcel to have, to have some water he, he from that well. Propose, because what, when you write the condition, you are writing. You don't say well. You say a rate that must be produced. And you can say that it must come from that parcel. Um, but he does have the ability to tie into. A mutual water system, and that could be something that could be proposed to address all the water for all the parcels. And that's quite common with subdivisions: is that they can't, they half the parcels can produce water, the other half can't, so they form a water district, and they can produce enough water for everybody. So the the water well test, as I recall, I don't have it in front of me, but I think they tested the well for four hours. Do, you, do we have that information? I think, I think I remember the description said that it ran for three and a half hours, then it broke suction, 
They let it rest for 15 minutes, and then they it ran until noon. Right? And then it, but then it, what started, it started up again after that 15 minutes, which I think would have been 11:45, and it was still running at noon when they ended the test. I guess my question is: Is that the standard test that a well would go through? Or I can't, I can't answer that specifically. I look to my staff to tell me that this can produce what it needs. That. Because this is what they're looking for. I mean, if the well was producing 10 gallons a minute for that three hours, three and a half hours, that would be 2,100 gallons that it produced. And we don't know really how much it did after that. We know it ran through. You know, I, I guess my, my question is really just whether that meets the standard. You said it's a licensed professional, and that, that's, that's, that test is accepted yeah. by the county as producing. It was reviewed 10, by our 10. environmental health department. Commissioner Matthews, I can, I can give you a little more information if you want in terms okay. of the general uh, concept of that. But as, as Director Chip had mentioned, that there are numerous types of well production tests that go on. What we see typically for um, a well such as this on a, on a single parcel that has a what we would consider a relatively low volume of use, uh, the typical four hour, three and a half hour, four hour pump test. Is what a well driller would normally come out and look at and do as a problem. Um, there are other tests. Uh, there are standards for production of 8 hour, 24 hour, 48 hour. There are certain levels of production. But it's always based on the volume of water you're, you need to, to get, whether it be for a production use or some other type of, of uh, well. So the answer four hours is kind of the standard that environmental health departments across most of the Northern California are using. There are cases where they will require a longer test if they if they feel that it's needed, or if the um, or sometimes the applicant will, will run a longer test just to show that there is more water. Thank you. Three and a half hours in the, in the report. Okay. Yes. Yeah, if I may, Mr. Please. It seems to me that um, there's enough water for the one parcel. If he's going to use the other three parcels, either he's going to have to submit to the county a plan and come up with more water, or it's going to come to us with a CUP, and we're going to have to look to see if there's going to be enough water. And right now, there's enough water for that one parcel. Now that actually gets determined at the CUP time right, when it comes in the building, not the CUP here, maybe. No, when it comes, comes in, in at, at building permit. Yeah. Then you determine what's a condition exactly. that you supply adequate water for the use that's proposed. And they, they go through and they propose what the use is and we look at what the well production is. We sometimes we fire tanks with it. Uh, you know, fire the, the biggest one usually is fire permit <coughs> and says, Well you gotta produce this and most wells do not produce fire flow. I mean, it's, they, you give you an example of the gel needed 1,500 uh, uh, gallons per minute. So, you know, if, you'd have to have huge tanks to do that if you were doing a well. But the water system can do it. But what they do is in a lot of residential homes, if they require you to build a tank or put a tank on the side of the house from the standpoint. So that when the fire truck pulls up, they can connect to it and get that water. But that water is stored water that's pumped out all through the day. So it's it's a condition that you do, it's reviewed by fire, it's reviewed by the building and approved or not approved. Either you either you produce it or you don't. Can Mr. Tippett speak into his mic because he's speaking directly to you and it's hard to hear back there? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I will make sure. Thank you, Mr. Swanson. Thank you. <coughs> Commissioners? Well, for the sake of moving forward, thank you. I move that we recommend to the Board of Supervisors that they certify the initial study and mitigated negative declaration is consistent with the California Environmental Quality Act. CEQA requirements and adopt the mitigated monitoring and reporting program MMRP. 
were there findings associated with that particular recommendation that you that need to be in there? I did not see any particular any. Oh, there are CEQA findings. I'm sorry. And um, including the findings as listed in the uh, staff report. Those on page five of the staff report? Yes. <coughs> I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to recommend to the Board of Supervisors if they certify. Any discussion about that motion? All right, hearing none. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Motion carries 4-1. Um, and we move on to the rezone portion of the meeting. This will also be treated, treated as a separate action by the commission and um, have a public comment period associated with it. Is there a staff report associated with this? No, the uh, staff report covered the uh, form. Okay, so the proposed item I, I, is... I'm sorry, I do <laughs> want to mention, though, that it does... The staff... Now we're getting more into the conditions. Um, the, or the mitigated negative... Or the mitigated negative debt talked about the mitigations. This is where you get into the conditions between use permit and this would be heavily relying on the conditions. We are having them separately, but the conditions kind of blend okay. together. But the conditions end up on the permit, not on the rezone. Yeah. That's right. It gives the clarity there in your packet that you have on uh, page 16 are the, some of the recommended uh, conditions of approval for the use permit. Right. Uh, you could look at those and there, there may be other ones you may want to include or, or, or delete out of uh, if you have additional comments related to the, the rezone. Uh, so this would be a uh, the use permit and the rezone. We could combine those with, at the end of the day, if this was approved by the Board of Supervisors, permit was issued, the conditions of approval for that action could include items with the rezone. It could be staggered to have certain items must be done prior to issuance of a permit in compliance with the rezone. So there's different ways it can be done, either this body or the board of We just, yeah, it's not a uh, Building on that, uh, Earlier, we were at. You were asking the question about should we do this on four parcels? That would be a rezone question, or should we do it with just the building itself? That would be a <coughs> permit question. I'm still looking for the. I know they're in here. I can't find. Oh, not page 15 uh, in my book. Because this is approval. Oh yeah, yeah, page 18. They're right there. The handwritten page. I found them. All right. So the subject at hand is the rezone of those four parcels from Highway Commercial to Heavy Commercial, HC to C3. Um, any questions of staff from the commission? Would the applicant like to speak to this? Hello, Terry Gines. Um, I wanted to clean up the water issue. Um, Mr. Shelton, was using logging trucks and he was washing them daily. 18 logging trucks washing them daily. He was bringing in extra water to wash his trucks. That was it. Okay? So there's a craziness here of fear mongering over water. There's plenty of water on this parcel. We've had it tested. That was a test. Mrs. Um, 
Isabel Peterson had done. We had one since then. We've had it tested many times. We wanted to make sure you guys had all the tests previous and future. Um, as far as it goes, um, as far as the rezone, um, a highway commercial property would use a lot of water also, probably more than a C3, just as a whole. You have the same uses. You're going to have major traffic on highway commercial properties. I think everyone's forgetting here what this is changing from, changing to. It'll actually have less traffic on a C3 than it would on a highway commercial, especially if I had a restaurant or I did something that was, say, promoting or did a, uh, say, a fairground, something of that nature, um, hotels. Um, that's what this property is zoned for. We're actually changing it to a much smaller use, and a lot of the numbers are in hopes that we actually are successful. We have to actually do this to be successful. We're all into a new portion of regulation here, so it is part of that. So as far as like changing use, um, this is very, very um, simple land use. There's already C3 there. There's a wrecking yard next door um, with Laura Lynn's, which has never been through the environmental study. Our property has been through all the environmental studies. Laura Lynn's would never pass it because of what she does there. But our property is extremely environmentally safe, and we're going to keep it that way. Thank you. And the Laura Lynn's property is which property? Thank you. So we're open to public comment. Three minutes. Please focus on the rezone. Veronica Kelly, Marshall Ranch Road. Kelly Albies, sorry, hon. Uh, Marshall Ranch Road, <laughs> Douglas City. Um, you have a lot of my written comments, but a rezone should not be uh, taken lightly. Uh, you are being asked to consider changing the face of a neighborhood and highway commercial area, which is needed in Trinity County, not just Douglas City which are part, and it is part of the core area within the Douglas City Community Plan, and for what purpose? Not to create economic opportunities for the Douglas City area, for the one fact of economic opportunity for a property owner. There is currently only one project plan presented for one of these parcels, however, four are being requested to rezone. There are no plans or other tangible means to know what the many uses allowed for within a C3 zone could create for the environment and or the neighborhood. The current trend is for parcels to obtain cannabis permits for projects beyond cultivation, then list property for sale, all while mentioning that the permit is transferable to a new owner. The Hoffman Project received their approved permits from you in November and obtained their state license and is now listed on the MLS for $7 million. The 271 Industrial Weaverville Project received their approval pre permits in May 2018, and online real estate sites say a uh, permit is available for resale along with property. Appropriate zoning, good location, great municipal services, and a great real estate business plan. Uh, rezoning for one particular business project is currently presented smacks of the appearance of preferential treatment and should not be used to create better real estate opportunity. C3 has uses that cannot be supported by the environmental conditions of these parcels. Um, already, Most of that has already been pointed out. I'd like to say um, there are those that want to use the old you just don't like cannabis card. It's lazy and uninformed in most cases. I support good business plans, good locations, most importantly, good neighborhoods. As previously stated, there are at least two properties available for sale that I think would be great for their business model, applicant's business model. And also, the Douglas City Community Plan states that that is supposed to be maintained as a highly attractive, visible area. C3 are designed not to be on highways. They're tucked back so that they can perform the more rugged, C3 uses, and that is what I'd like to point out. Thank you. Thank you. Gail Goodyear. <clears throat> Thank you, Veronica Albies, for your thorough presentation. I had no idea before I came here tonight that there would be three separate discussions, I would have prepared my presentation differently. I would have said at the beginning that the um, initial study was very poorly written and should be rejected. The rezone, um, I would repeat what Veronica said, but considering I have three minutes, I will stick to the four parcels have a history as a four in one use allowing a zoning change for four small parcels so they could be used separately by different businesses is a complexity 
that um, I don't believe you've addressed tonight. And as far, far beyond uh, anyone's discussion, this 11 um, parcel has no right of way to Highway 3. And um, so the changing to heavy industrial when you would have to use Marshall Ranch Road with no requirement of road improvement on widening the road to be used um, for this heavier use. Um, I'd like to point out that the APN ending in eight is one acre about, nine is about one acre, 10 is an acre and a half, and then 11 is about an acre and three quarters. These are very small parcels really um, for asking for this kind of use. I really question parking. Uh, Mr. Mines um, has continued to want to argue about the water. Um, he has no history in Douglas City. So I don't know why he thinks he can give testimony when others who have lived there um, <clears throat> for a very, very long number of decades know exactly the water potential and the percolation potential of these properties. I um, would really like to see the um, percolation tests for um, being able to subdivide into these four parcels to begin with. I believe um, whatever happened then may, have, may be highly questioned. Thank you very much. I ask you not to approve the reason. Thank you, Ms. Goodyear. My name is Liam Gogan, and I own some property in Denver City. Um, I agree with Gail and the obvious family that uh, this land will not perk well. It will not, there's not a lot of water there. So that the mine, the, uh, the wells will not perk. Um, just the, just Gail's family in general has some, over 100 years of history on this ground. Uh, including the obvious, much more than that. Um, I also find it strange that uh, the applicant knows that uh, that Lee and Dee Sheldon wash their trucks 18 times a day, every day. Uh, I knew them both till they died. I've known Laura Lynn Richard. Laura Lynn knows the property, she knows the water there, she knows that there is no water there. Um, you won't get it there. Um, as Gail said, as the obvious says, they're not here to, uh, to make things up. There's no water there. It's not, it's not going to happen. And uh, I don't know how you come up with this statement. I assume it's factual. The applicant thinks it's factual that uh, the uh, Shelton's washed 18 big days a day, every day. Uh, especially since they haven't been there for probably 8 or 10 years. And at the end of their career, they weren't running very much logs at all. So you're talking about a very, very long time ago, if they were and they weren't. So I, uh, with what I know about the property, the only property in the area, um, I think that uh, this, well, this should be turned down. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello, Chris Blair here. So typically people use about 80 to 200 gallons of water a day. That's if you're bathing, doing your laundry. Let's take out bathing, that's 17. Comes to 63 gallons a day per person, times 15 people roughly, we're at 28,000 gallons uh, monthly. And let's say the well only produces five gallons a minute. We're still looking at 187,650 gallons a month over what it would take to supply the 15 to 20 people, maybe 150,000 gallons extra. That's not to mention water could be trucked in. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. That, that's going to be something that falls on the owner of the place. It's a little bit of money. You come in, they're there 20 minutes, big deal. You're just providing more jobs for the community. Secondly, we're talking about septic. If there is a major issue that we it could easily just be done above ground again providing more jobs for J&J &J, other septic pumpers that come in take it out we're also forgetting there's a 7500 square foot building there Trading County's rainfall is about 49 inches on average a year 
So if we collected that, that'd be roughly 228,000 gallons a year, just in that case in point alone. So water here, I mean, with on, let's say we're at 20, 20 people working there full time, we're still at 150,000 gallons above what we need per month. And, and that's at half rate at five gallons a minute, not 10 gallons a minute well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Trinity County's rainfall is not 49 inches annually. Please. David, I, I, I gave some things to pass out. I'd like to mention that first. What if the partials are sold? If they're sold, they'll go to heavy industrial C3 use and require that amount of water per, per uh, parcel. Um, as is evident when a uh, permit has been granted, two out of two have already been up for sale. Um, um, the residents, we did discuss that the water well provide, has to provide water to that residence as well. So that's two parcels already that, um, and I don't think Mr. Tibbet addressed that. He only addressed, as well as CEQA, what that water would produce for that specific project, meaning that the uh, prod, uh, parcel on the residential area does give me water. Um, I would like to point out, too, that 25, more than 25 percent of that land uses is for residential use, which is prohibited by uh, heavy commercial or highway commercial. It's already a residential area. It should be rezoned RR. Um, again, not anti-cannabis. I want to describe that right off the bat. We are concerned about our neighborhood and what an industrial complex would, would do, and four additional parcels turned C3 would just be that, an industrial park. Uh, I fully support all but one of the residents residing on Marshall Road. Uh, I mean, sorry, I represent and um, I strongly object to the application rezoning request for the four current zone highway commercial to heavy commercial. Our community would be robbed of 1% of the remaining undeveloped highway commercial zone parcels of the Dutch City Plan established as economically important and for the core, commu um, core, core community area. The rezone parcels and business permits requests would not serve the Dutch City community aesthetically or economically as the current plan exhaustive studies prescribed. These zone parcels would best serve our community as highway commercial and as a current plan states, will not environmentally support C3. Keep saying that over and over. New studies don't change what the old one had. Uh, the intent behind any community plan as part of our con constitution is to establish guidelines to protect the property rights of the existing zone surrounding community to keep us all from plunging into economic chaos. Detrimental effects from changes in zones take priority over the benefit of the one property owner who wishes to change or rezone what was established prior to purchase. No one would have insisted to purchase any property if they were not assured of this constitutional right. This proposed rezone would have a detrimental economic effect to the community surrounding residential property values, economic shifts in current community plans, and future economic uncertainty. The main purpose of the planning commission is to ensure property rights and values are not negatively affected by the change in rezoning and to adhere to that current community plan. Based on a major community developer's opinions, which I have checked with and I have given you names of, just my own property values could decrease by as much as $300,000. That is not 12, that is not 20, and that is um, local developers in this area who have told me verbatim who wouldn't touch it if this project goes through or if it's heavy commercial. Um, in addition, our rural lifestyle, fire hazards, and environmental issues cannot support a heavy commercial rezone as clearly stated in the Planning Commission's own approved of the city plan. The second and latest initial CEQA survey does not support or have supporting documentation to answer the multiple mistakes and questions from the last paper drill um, survey presented in April's committee. Too many of the same existing problems with this rezone still exist. Mr. Elvis, you took your time. Hi, my name is Chloe Always, and um, my mom told me to come up here and say, my mom wants me to let you know what you have been handed, what is a paragraph petition against a rezoning 49, oh, 49 against 34 from Douglas City. I think it's a bit. 49 signatures. Yeah, we have 49 signatures, and 34 are from Douglas City. Thank you. Do we have that? 
we have that? It was handed over. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Hello, I am Veronica Tadine. I live on Marshall Ranch Road. I'm just going to read off here. Based on the planning department's past of lack of ability to control code enforcement for highway commercial enterprises, furthers our case against what four heavy commercial parcels would look like after a few short months with any business, business model. Should and when Mr. Mines' family sell any properties rezoned to heavy commercial, that enterprise would have any right to do any heavy commercial business without any intervening permits. Heavy commercial zones <coughs> not intended for residential or within sight of highway areas would destroy all the hard fought work for riverfront residential properties that would now have been worthless. Stated very clearly, our whole mass family wealth is tied to these properties and would be lost so just one property owner can make even more money for our whole life's work. I'd like to point out also, who wouldn't want a restaurant, another one in Douglas City? And if we do change that over to heavy commercial, would we ever be allowed to have another restaurant or anything in those areas? Maybe we would prefer to have another type of business. And who wants to have this business in their backyard? Everybody raise your hands. I'm sure nobody would. And that's part of the reason why we're here. We have nothing against bringing more business to this whole area. It's the type of business that we're looking at every day that we're going to be passing by, that the school bus is going to be taking hundreds of kids by every day. And just something to think about there. You know, we need more restaurants, we need more things that families can go to, and things like that for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Commission Justin Hawkins paid for. Um, I probably don't have a whole lot to say exactly about the rezone as it is, but I drove by today and uh, parcel to the north is highway commercial, also, I believe, and it is a wrecking yard. I mean, it is a mess, and I'm sure that a restaurant might be more appealable than the wrecking yard there, but I couldn't tell you if it was heavy industrial or highway commercial or not just by driving by, but the, also the parcel to the south has storage units and uh, today there's a giant burn pile wrecking mess between the highway and the storage units. So, I mean, I think we do have problems with code enforcement in this county, no doubt, um, but uh, just from the, a lay perspective driving by, I couldn't even tell a difference, honestly, between the zonings as it is. And, um, the ones that are subject to the rezone today were probably the cleanest in the neighborhood. Thank you. Good evening, Chair McHugh, Commissioners. Lisa Wright from Lewiston. Um, I just wanted to point out that uh, you did approve an initial study that really already talked about the rezoning from highway commercial to um, C3, um, stating that there are oftentimes indistinguishable differences between the impact from those different zonings. Um, it also goes on to state that there could be a low intensity type of highway commercial that would actually be more impactful in terms of lighting and um, traffic. You know, for example, they used in their study the comparison of a car wash. Um, compared uh, a truck repair shop as well. So I think it's important, you know, to point out that, to kind of bring things back. You know, I grew up in South Dakota and I was in, in, in the city, but uh, on the edge. And there was this great elf, alpha field across the street and when we were kids, we'd crawl through it and make like mazes. And in the wintertime, we made tunnels and it was a terrific place. And, uh, you know, a few years later, it was actually commercial property and there were industrial buildings and warehouses that went up. So, you know, sometimes we have this idyllic idea, you know, of how our community should look and be. But in fact, there's zoning and there are allowable uses within that zoning. So I would encourage you to come back to kind of the, the fact that initial, the initial study did find um, that the impact could be even potentially less significant in this rezoning and what we're requesting here is a rezoning. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Carol Pencil from Lewiston, and I didn't plan on speaking, but I agree with everything that the property owners say about their property values, their neighborhood, the community plan, and I also remember something about, um, well, that happened to that person over there, and I didn't stand up because it didn't affect me. And then this happened to them over there, but I didn't stand up because it didn't affect me. Oh, well, now it affects me, and there's nobody left to stand up for me. So I want to stand up for these guys and honor the zoning that the community came up with and value their property values and value their community. Thank you. Thank you. Sue Reeds of Lewiston. Um, I would just like to ask each of the commissioners, would you want to live next door to a highway commercial property? That's what we have to do. Your home. Um, I just want to say that I also agree with the homeowners in Douglas City, and I would urge you not to approve the result. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> My name is Bob Hunt. I've been in Trinity County for the last 30 years at Three Forks. Nothing's affected my life as much as cannabis in that area. And it's a lack of enforcement. I truly understand what they're fighting for, and I see no reason that you should approve this zoning. I, for one, won't be living in Trinity County much longer just for that fact. I've seen my whole community go just because of cannabis and not the enforcement to enforce it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Hello, my name is Christy Bavard from Lewiston. I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak. In the effort and essence of moving things forward, I think you should take a step back <coughs> and uh, review the CEQA document. It said nothing about the hazardous fuel that will be on the rezone, if it indeed happens, and that word keeps coming up, if and when, and if you take a giant step back and review the CEQA document, <clears throat> you will see there's some major flaws in there. Don't talk about anything about uh, hazardous spills and what will be done about it, because they happen all the time. And there says nothing about the waste product that will come out of that uh, rezone if and when it happens. It says nothing about the amount of water proposed for the business. And take it from me, things get built in Trinity County without water because I've seen it, I drive by it every day, and there's property that doesn't perk, and people live on it. So if you take a giant step back, you'll move forward a lot better. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioner Sean Brower from Junction City. And uh, just a couple observations. I know this is a really hot potato tonight. Uh, it's great to hear all the community concerns and watch uh, the Commission wrestle with uh, uh, balancing um, economic interests and uh, uh, concerns of the community. Um, one thing is uh, the Douglas City Community Plan. Uh, encourages flexible zoning to accommodate uh, changing economic opportunities. And I think most of these people are right. This, uh, this, this strip is really important, and it's one of the few places in the county that can accommodate um, uses uh, <coughs> such as these. And uh, cannabis distribution use isn't really what um, you're voting on right now, or you're considering right now, it's, it's the rezone. And, it seems that one way to, to uh, tackle this might be a compromise where the, the parcel with the residents on it seems to be uh, a lot of the concern of the neighborhood and uh, perhaps um, it could be separated from the rest of the highway frontage parcels. And um, 
the conditional use permit um, is a separate matter and should be considered separately. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. My name is Steve Roadhouse, and I'm from uh, Lewiston also. And I see that uh, there's one thing that seems to have been left out, and that is the the safety of the community and the homes there. We, as you, as you've all seen, there's a definite increase in crime in our community. And you put this kind of product in that area, and the people in that area, well, one of them mentioned all the people just walking through the yard. There has been really no policing or consideration of the hazard to the community because of what this particular drug will bring. And you know it's the baser sort in a lot of cases, and not all. But it hasn't been addressed, and it's an important issue for you guys to consider. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, Tom Belenko, Douglas City. I know this has nothing to do with tenants, so we'll keep it focused on zoning uses. Uh, if you look at this <coughs> piece of property in Douglas City that I drive by numerous times a day, every day, and <coughs> what are the uses under highway commercial? With, that you can get without a use permit. I know use permits ban things, and that's that's important and good. Convenience store, food store, restaurant with drive-through, auto service station, hotel motel, general office or retail store, recycling center when conducted entirely indoors, church. See any of that up there? It's been highway commercial for 30 years. Uh, those are important uses, they're valuable. Uh, yes, it would be great if any one of those things were there. None of those things are there. We have a warehouse, we have mini storage, we have what could pass for auto repair if you stretch it. And we have tank storage. These are all listed under heavy commercial. That is a heavy commercial part of the county. That's what the uses there are now. This is not some radical change to what's actually going on there now. Yes, this is legal now, and that makes things different. But in terms of what the zoning is, this is an appropriate change of zoning. Everything else has a different question and a different problem to it. But in terms of rezone, this is an appropriate rezone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My name is Marlene Olistek, and I'm a Weaverville resident. Um, I have two things to say. Um, as, a, as they're commenting about the auto repair shop or whatever in the storage unit, that's more of an enforcement issue than an allowable issue. Um, I live on Ransom Road, and if I'm sure you guys are all aware, it's been in the news. There was a, a cannabis distribution center there. It wasn't legal. Um, I live probably a thousand feet from that, if maybe even farther. My issue is I've got kids, and the smell that I could smell from that building that's that far away from me was overpowering at some times. I could smell it all the way up the street. I couldn't imagine living right next door to it. I have no problem with cannabis, but I do have a problem when it's around children, around homes and people. It needs to be somewhere where it's not going to be that effective toward other people. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Cheryl Milam of Weaverville. Kind of want to go a little bit different direction. Um, 
The definition of illegal spot zoning is the process of singling out a parcel of land for a use classification totally different from that of the surrounding area for the benefit of the landowner of that property to the detriment of the other surrounding owners. Spot zoning is illegal in the state of California. The proposal to rezone Mr. Mines is seeking is illegal spot zoning by definition. It will drastically reduce the surrounding property values. It will actively and negatively change how the community functions in and around their homes, as well as the community in general. There is no rational basis for doing so that serves anyone but the investors themselves. We've already heard about loose dogs, trespassers, noise that typically isn't an issue. It will not be an asset to the small community. Douglas City has a comprehensive community plan that does not support this as a heavy commercial location. Trinity County has two designated industrial areas that this business would be better served. It has infrastructure in place for fire suppression, water, septic to support the 20 plus people Mr. Mine says he will employ. Personally, I don't care if he wants to dis distribute Barbie dolls. I don't, I don't care. But the heavy commercial and potential manufacturing facility should not be near our homes, schools, or rivers. The people directly affected and strongly opposing this will only have two choices if this is granted. They either suck it up and deal with it, or they move. I'm sure Mr. Mines doesn't care either way as long as he gets what he wants. Mm -hmm. the potential effects every, the, this potentially affects every person in this county. Any of us who have vacant land or a large enough lot for sale is open to someone buying it, rezoning it to heavy commercial once a precedent is set. The future of our historic towns and tourism is in jeopardy. This isn't the future we need to move forward or toward. As Planning Commission, you are the gatekeepers of our communities. And you must carefully scrutinize all applications for zoning, any zoning change, and take that task very seriously. Not just check off a box to get it off your desk. Thank you. Anybody else? Please? Everett, go ahead. <laughs> He's been trying to get up there for a while now. <laughs> Everett Harvey Weaverville. Uh, I keep looking at that map and I keep wondering why there's four sections you want to rezone when you're only really talking about what's going on at one of them. Uh, maybe you can group them together into one parcel, the opposite of subdividing or whatnot. And on the other hand, it may be good to keep one of those available in case you want to build a McDonald's there or something. Um, so anyway, I'm a little puzzled as to why you're rezoning this four pieces of something. Right. Thank you. Thank you for letting me speak twice again. Strange that I stood after every whose house I live in now. Um, but I think Christy's right. She's been through CEQA and NEQA and many different things with uh, Trinity River Restoration. And this uh, CEQA plan that you guys have seems to be very lost over, as most of them do. Um, on one of these graphics that you guys had up here, it showed the in detail parking structure. I think it showed a security. Yeah. Um, gate there and a security hut on one of those. And keep in mind, this is you know a mile from the school. Uh, it's a mile from the store that I own uh, that sees you know, 500 to 1,000 people a day come through there. So this one here, it has a guard hut in, right off Highway 3, it looks like. Um, well, what, what is the guard? Who, who mans that? Is that manned by uh, the average person, a guard with a gun, uh, and it also said somewhere there's going to be security around this thing. So what? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. The, these issues are valid issues or questions about the conditional use permit, but I don't think this is really rezoning. Help me understand how those are reason that those are zoning issues. I was just wondering if there's any guys running around with guns here. Okay. Anybody else? I have one more comment. 
Have you, I'm sorry, I mean, have you already spoken on this? Oh, we can't do it again. It's <laughs> Could you go back to the parcel map that was up there earlier? Parcel uh, map. Well, do you want the four parcels that you had up there just before? <coughs> yeah, more, so. My name is Gene Goodyear. Weaverville and a partner at the Redding Creek Tree Farm. I wanted to uh, address Mr. Mines' uh, water, the water issue. Um, I've been going down there all my life. There's never been 18 logging trucks there at one time. First of all, either by uh, the Sheltons or the Bundys or uh, Joe Cheek used to have, that's his, he built that logging shop directly across the highway. And when those people were operating in the summertime, there's no time to be washing trucks. At no time ever did I see a, a logging truck being washed down there, unless it was on a weekend. So the water issue is something that I think is really serious before you, I'm opposed to the rezone, make that clear. But water on four parcels. Um, and That's all also these. a conditional use permit issue, though. Oh, okay. The, okay. But, well, he brought up the water in this portion of it. So as far as the zoning goes, but, uh, did you have anything to add on the zoning change? I'm opposed. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, I'll your comments. Thank you. I'll close the public comment on the rezone and bring it back to the commission. <coughs> to rezone. And why does it have to be C3? Why can't it be C2? Because C2 would allow for distribution. Mm -hmm. And I understand that if we make that change, that it would have to go back through CEQA, I believe, again. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't believe that is the case if you've oh, gone really? through the process. I mean, the, the CEQA document evaluated all the properties. The action to zone or rezone, again, is, is your decision in terms of how you want to allocate land uses out there and if you determine that the rezone is, should only be done for one parcel or two parcels or however many you want it's to do it. But that's CEQA separate, would still apply. That's correct. CEQA okay. looks at, looked at all that's of the good. projects as well. Okay. Um, can I ask my cumulative impacts question again? You can ask it anytime you want. So, there are six highway commercial parcels, if my math is correct, that remain there. Let's Does that sound right? Let me take a look here. <laughs> well, there's the so-called auto repair. There's, there's four parcels in this proposal. There is That's the four. auto repair slash dismantler. That's five. To the top is five. There is the uh, mini storage to the south. That's six. And then there is the um, logging uh, trucking. Seven. So there's seven highly commercial right. in this uh, uh, core district area That's right. along the stretch there. And, and the proposal is to take four of them out of play as highly commercial. That's correct. Right. That's a big percentage. Um, it's also, um, you know, I, I'm struck by this as we're, I'm, I'm sympathetic to the arguments that the community's general, community's community plan called for highway commercial type activities along this stretch of road. And they put in, at the time of the plan, I think there were eight highway commercial parcels, on eight or nine. The one, County, the one that turned into rural residential. Um, and maybe I'm off by one or two. 
And now we're down to seven, I think. And, and four of those are, are taken out now, and uh, that's a big chunk. And, and so the impact of reducing highway commercial down to a couple of parcels and maybe they go away on the eve of redoing the general plan. You know? And I'm going to encourage the people of the city to get to work on your community plan update because the board is threatening to uh, initiate the community plan, uh, the general plan update this year, maybe <coughs> next year. Mm -hmm. But a big piece of the input to that is the community plan. And, and, but we have the one we have, and it says that's in the core district of, of Douglas City and is highway commercial. And taking lot that much out of it at this juncture <laughs> um, strikes me as a big impact. And I come back to my cumulative impact of all highway commercial in Douglas City and what, you know, what's the picture there? What does this do with it? And maybe even extend it a little bit outside of the city, you know, for the traveling public, highway commercial. And I don't get the sense we looked at it that way in this study. That's correct. We did not look at that in this study again because we were not looking at general plan considerations of how that zoning may or may not change. Okay. So, so, so it's not a simple question. But in the Although it's a cumulative impact question, so I'm, I'm standing on the fence on that. Right. But um, it's an issue, and I think we need to consider um, somewhat along the line of Commissioner Stewart's question. You know, four parcels is a lot to rezone here. <coughs> it's a big chunk of what's left in the city along that stretch. I agree there's no restaurants there yet, but I, I don't think the answer is let's make sure that they ever get one. Yeah, I, I, you know, to answer or amplify on your question and comments, that, that is exactly the point of having, as we you know, discussed earlier, having the three items on the agenda tonight is the fact that you can have approvals of one or two, but not a third or fourth. I mean, there, there's there's levels in there. Okay, I want to get at what was, what was, what work had already been done. I think that's an issue, and I think that, um, this is where we do get to talk about socioeconomic issues. It's not in CEQA, but it's at the, the board and it's at the planning commission. And I think there are relevant issues here in those two areas here. I, I did have some, what I believe might be cumulative uh, impact uh, comments. I'll just give you some statistics that was developed through our GIS system. Uh, highway commercial, there were This is the GIS system that has that. Parcel up the there GIS system. Mr. Tippett, I can't hear you. And our GIS shows that we have 144 highway commercial uh, zone properties in the county, with 16 being in the Douglas City area. Uh, for heavy commercial in the county, we have 36 heavy commercial uh, zone properties, with none in the Douglas City area. Well, with all due respect to the GIS system, we know that two of those highway commercial things in the GIS system are not highway commercial, right? So, I'd say it's probably largely accurate, but, you know, we're splitting hairs over whether you take four out of seven or four out of nine. It's a, uh, you know, it's a big impact. That's a my own point. I just want, being that we had the information, I thought it was important. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Um, Mr. Hort. Thank you. I do understand the complexity brought up by Mrs. Goodyear, and it does make sense to me. If so, the complexity that three other applications for C3 activities, business proposals, specific, specific uses would have a significant cumulative impact in the area in the, to the neighboring residents. Uh, furthermore, to change the zoning on, a, on APN 15490-11 from RR to C3 with the lack of housing that exists in Trinity County seems inappropriate. So if, if we move forward as a commission, I, I, I think it is appropriate and prudent to just rezone the property in question that's specifically related to the CUP. I don't really see the need at the moment to rezone all three parcels. You know, just a suggestion to the commission. I provide clarification for that. Um, the con I, I want to be clarified in terms of the, of the four parcels. You're concerned that one of them is zoned residential. Uh, is isn't it? No, it's not. It, it has a it has an existing 
non-conforming use, meaning that there's an existing residence on there that doesn't conform with the zoning, but it's allowed because it's been existing at the time the zoning was implemented. And so it's not, it's, it is an HC parcel. It is not a residential zone parcel. There, but there are residential uses on the parcel. I see. Thank you, Mr. Chan. I know it may, may not make it different, but it is a clarification. Yeah, I appreciate it. And in fact, in, due to my argument in the community, 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 sorry. Impact. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Uh, it does not change my argument. The fact is uh, um, three separate, uh, so then if the rezone goes through, through, uh, that would be four separate potential businesses. And with the, uh, with the controversy that we're having now, I mean, imagine three more potential businesses coming to the area of impact. So I don't, I don't believe the rezoning of all four is an appropriate measure to take at the time. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, well, it's obviously a challenging issue. When I first looked at it, I said, oh, well, there's some precedent, right? We had an HC parcel rezoned C3 right there. And you look at the existing uses in the area, they are basically more like C3 than they are HC. And if you look through the list, and as people have told us, HC are probably more intensive uses for water and wastewater than C3. So, at least on the surface, it would appear to make sense that, that a rezone would be fine. It would be in character with what is out there and historically what's happened, what the precedent has been. But I think when you consider the neighborhood opposition, <coughs> if nobody wants it in Douglas City, then it, it seems I have a hard time supporting something that you know, all of the residents adjacent to are against. So that's, that's, that's what's tough for me. Um, basically what we know is that the, those parcels really don't support much use at all. Whether it's HC or C3, uh, the reason they've never, I mean, you know, the general plan, the community plan's been out there over 30 years. It would be great if there was HC uses there for the community. They've had 30 years and they've never really been developed. So do we need to give C3 a shot? I don't, I don't know. I mean, that's, <laughs> we have a proposal here. So it's, it's, uh, it's a really tough issue. But uh, I would come down on the side of the residents. So, uh, I think that's where I, that's where I have to come. If there was no opposition to it, obviously we'd be moving forward. But in other issues, uh, land use issues that we had when there has been extensive opposition, we've uh, rarely moved forward with the proposal. I've heard from at least some of the people who are in opposition that they are not so much against the um, the cannabis distribution facility. They're against zoning all four parcels C3. And, um, and I really don't see, I mean, you know, if you don't need it to be C3 in order to have your distribution facility, why should it, why make it C3? Is, is is my thought and it's it's kind of a compromise it allows and I you know the, this is kind of not so much rezoning as as it is the, the CUP but but with the fact that the Hoffman enterprise is not going to happen we will not have a distribution facility. We are in desperate need of a distribution facility. One of the reasons I am hesitant to zone all four parcels C3 is because of looking at what's happened when you have a large chunk of land that's been rezoned and the fact that they have then been put out for sale. And I don't think that's what Mr. Mines plans, but like happened with Mr. Hoffman, his, um, 
his partnership fell apart and he was then undercapitalized. And um, so I, I'm looking at a compromise. Well, I can uh, I can agree that I don't I don't see a, a reason behind rezoning the entire strip uh, C three and leaving no highway commercial. So if you do want a highway commercial to use, you either fit it in on C three or you have to go through another rezone. Um, it it seems like if we were going to rezone limiting to the the parcel in question um, might also <laughs> cover some of the concerns I had with the I I still I don't think that the personally I don't know that the seek was adequate for the rezone part of whether or not we looked at what could happen if we rezone all this heavy commercial un, as part of CEQA. I still have an issue with that. So um, it seems to me that CEQA is more geared toward the one parcel that something has already been proposed for. So um, I would have a less of a hard time if we were only talking about rezoning the one parcel with a proposed plan on it rather than all four. But uh, at this time, I would I'd lean more in favor of the community of Douglas City who spoke out in, faith, uh, in opposition of the rezone. Could, could we ask County Council about, uh, we were reminded about spot zoning by a member of the audience tonight? Spot zoning it. <coughs> Is, is an issue where you ultimately place um, some benefit on one property owner over another, um, or where you create some zoning specific to uh, a use for the benefit of one party, um, rather than the typical zoning. Um, spot zoning isn't triggered um, where you have a commercial property um, and the use is somewhat different, um, and you're conforming to that use. Spot zoning would be. So, are you saying that HC to C3 on one parcel would not be spot zoning? Well, s spot zoning is, if, if without um, taking you through the cases, it's a it's a highly complicated issue. But basically, what the court is looking for is where a commission is for the benefit of one party to the detriment of, of the other parties, specifically assisting them in a way that they wouldn't be assisting another resident. Um, or that you're creating a zone for something that otherwise couldn't. So it's not that it couldn't exist. I think there's there's four cases on this. And there's, there's probably, I wouldn't say there's a, a bright line rule, but it's, it's a very specific circumstance. So if we chose to proceed with rezoning a single parcel as opposed to the four that's proposed, would, I mean that's to a layman that seems more like a spot. Hey? <laughs> I'm just curious. I really have no well, idea. So the, the number of parcels that you that you change the zoning of would not go to the spot zone. So although although the term is spot zoning, which makes you think that you're creating some small section. Um, how large of a, an area you rezone and the number of parcels in it wouldn't, wouldn't be one of the factors that they would end the spot zone. So it's more preferential treatment than the rest. Well, they'd be four zone, four parcels. <laughs> and the, the preferential treatment was related to whether or not that use would be able to occur somewhere else, but not on that if you didn't do the rezone? So the, the, <coughs> case, the cases that are, are triggered here, like I said, there's really four of them that, that follow the, the line, but um, it would be, 
it would be basically the planning commission understanding that something is not in the best interest of the community and zoning it for the benefit of somebody against that. Group. So now when I say in the best in the benefit of the community, that does not that doesn't necessarily mean uh, that people aren't impacted by a reason. Well, obviously you know that they're impacted. <coughs> Thank you, I think. Good? <laughs> Not entirely. What's the pleasure of the commission? So we've got a, a proposal for C2. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't I just go ahead and do a motion, and then yeah, we can... Can we... Actually, can we... Chair? Yeah, we can. Um, I would, uh, and I want to make sure County Council hears this. I, I would recommend that we allow the applicant to speak to that issue before we make a motion. Yeah. No. Uh, County Council, I just want to make clarification that in order for, according to the county ordinance, the distribution facility must be on a C3. No, distribution is C2. And take a look at those ordinances. We need to clarify, but our understanding was is that we're looking at C3 zoning for the distribution facility. Can we ask the applicant to step forward uh, if he cares to? Uh, the question for the applicant would be if we were to select one parcel and one parcel would you be a mere amendable before we do that ordinance not for under c2 ordinance number 315-711 that's uh -huh. okay. would you be amenable to one parcel being rezoned and would you be amenable to something other than c3 well, as long as it applies and it allows our application, uh, I think that's fine. But, but could I discuss like a couple minor things here? Because it seems we're getting a little off track here. This is a simple rezone. It's a land use issue, and we're taking a lot of things into play here. People are putting down like they're comparing me to Sony Hoffman. It's very upsetting because I have a long track record of legal regulated sales. Regulation is what brings safety. There's a lot of fear-mongering going on here that's very unfortunate because it's not accurate. Um, that's why we all came to this room once upon a time was to bring regulation. Was for, part of it was for safety purposes. And I feel that's getting totally diluted in fiction, and it's not true. And I think we need to focus on what's really here here, and this is a simple land use issue. And uh, that's what's in front of you. And I'm okay with changing it to C2, but you, you need to actually quit thinking about um, less than 3% of the I mean, less than like 0% of this county and understand that you said it multiple times, these parcels have not been in use for a long time. I'm willing to invest heavily. We have multiple farms already. We've invested heavily as a family. We're not in debt. We own this property outright. You're accusing me of being Sonia Hoffman who's underfunded. I'm far from it. That's I've, I've heard this a lot of times. Someone's name come up over and over here. Please understand, I'm committed to this community. I have children in this community. We're in the school here. I work here. I'm going to attempt this. I can't guarantee I will be successful and that we'll be the winner of all this. But like you said, no one's doing this in this county, and I'm willing to take the foot and step forward. I can't guarantee success, but I will try, and I'm not selling. I have three farms I have to distribute for myself. All right, thank you, sir. If, if I can just say, I, Mr. Terry, I apologize. I was not trying to compare you to, to Mr. Hoffman at all. And, and if you recall, I said that I did not believe that, that you were planning on selling. No, I'm just like, no, okay. I'm not going anywhere. Okay, so we heard from the applicant on that. And were you able to verify that that I was correct? No, uh, we're 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 trying to work our way through the the, uh, the ordinance. I do I do have. Uh, I have a, a 
that you've already said through. So it's two and three. I'm sorry. Both two and three. Both two and three. Well, here, actually, let me read all this on the Thank you. Okay, so I will go ahead then with my motion. I move that we recommend to the Board of Supervisors that Assessor Parcel 015-490-10 be rezoned from Highway Commercial Zoning des des HC des Zoning Designation to General Commercial C2 Zoning Designation as provided in the County Zoning Ordinance 315 section, um, it would be a different section, and I don't know what that is. C2 is 21. Okay, section 21, <laughs> general commercial. Thank you. Um, with the findings listed in the staff report, Are they on? 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. 16. Except, that it's C2. Except for C2 instead of C3. And one parcel in about four. Could I have a point of order, order just to save the, the commission from a mistake? Uh, the building height is over 25 feet, which does not allow uh, for C3. I don't know about C2. Okay. It's not in the C, as required to say the height of the building. But it is in the sequel. It describes that in the sequel. C2 is 25 feet. C3 is also 25 feet. But okay, also, so, so it Yeah, it would, uh, the existing structure would be grandfathered in. <coughs> How would it be grandfathered in? Okay. Excuse me. No, I apologize. Sorry. No second. Okay, that motion dies for like a second. the reason. feel it's a mistake. We desperately need the, uh, the distribution and it's a question of economic de development for the, for the county and especially for the, the Hay Fork and area and the 299 corridor. Um, I can, I can, uh, I can see where you come from better. I, 
Uh, I do realize our county could use some economic boost, but I also think that we should not sacrifice the people who live in the community for said economic gain. That's why I tried to. So I, I just feel that due to the overwhelming response from the people of Douglas City that we should um, deny the results. Okay, thank you. Yes, I, um, you know, needless to say, this is a difficult topic and a difficult decision. I believe the commission has the responsibility since we have put arduous hours, so as the county supervisor staff ad hoc, to try to facilitate the mechanisms of the cannabis industry and, and those that have heavily invested in it. But at the same time, we are responsible and we have that equal servitude due to the community members. Um, I, I'm not comparing Mr. Mines to Mr. Hoffman whatsoever, but just the fact that that application went quite smoothly just because of the lack of community opposition and the location of such application and project. Um, it's, it's, it's difficult. Um, it's, uh, I'm sorry. So that's that's all I have to say. It's, it's, it's a difficult decision. Anybody else? Any comments? Let's bring it to a vote. Um, the motion to deny is <coughs> the rezone. All in favor, please pick pay, pay, pay. Um Do I need to come up with more concrete findings for this? Or uh, I, I think your findings um, probably should have. Uh, some facts that aren't simply for opposition. Uh, so you can you can put in the findings as far as the economic value and, and the um, statements that you can put across the board. So basically, that uh, finding number two that instead of saying not injurious, uh, I'm suggesting that it would be injurious to uh, public health, safety, and welfare. Is that sufficient? One finding sufficient? I will amend my second to. Okay. <coughs> we'll call that motion to a close. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. No. Did I count that in three, two? Yes. All right. Uh, this application is denied. Uh, that being the case, there's no um, <laughs> no tearing down to the CUP, and we will we will bring up that issue. Okay, Please, we're still in session. The applicant does have the right to appeal this decision to the board of supervisors, and they can uphold it or overturn it, and in which case they would probably send it back to us to consider the CUP. I believe those would be the next steps. With the, time, the time frame on And you have 10 days to ten. file that appeal, and then it will proceed. So that's, that's the next step. 10 working days. 10 working days. OK. Does it cost money? Uh, <coughs> probably. I don't know. But, but How much? 500. OK. All right. All right, moving on to number five, any matters from the commission? I'm going to be going to 24th for the scheduling person. That's a week from today. Uh, mm -hmm. Commission, I, there's at least a strong chance that I will not be able to be here also. Mm -hmm. Are we planning a meeting next week? We are. On the subject of that, is that public yet? Mass, mass grading. So next week's agenda, the item would be a, a mass. Or a mass grading ordinance. Mass grading uh, ordinance discussion. Is it a discussion or an actual ordinance to review? It's an actual ordinance. We have an action to send it on to the board. 
That was probably a matter of staff. Uh, any other matters from the commission? Any matters from staff? So I want to confirm again. Yeah. I'm scheduled to go to be up in Oregon to work, uh, leaving Tuesday. I mean, it's possible I could get back there tonight. I just don't know how work is going to evolve. But unfortunately, it's something I have to do. Anything else from staff? Thank you, one and all. With that, we are adjourned. Thank you all, too. Thank you Thank all. You. Thank you.